What's up, everyone? HMB Live on Facebook Live. It's 11 a.m. on Tuesday, and every Tuesday at 11 a.m., we do HMB Live. You can uh, tell sitting next to me is not the usual Chris Haddon. I've invited Glenn Eunice from Corner Unit Media on to the show today. He's got some really, really, really good insights related to social media and internet marketing and all the things that real estate investors, real estate agents, any small business owner needs, 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 needs. There's so many people in, that are still not online, on yeah. the line, and especially on, the on line. social media. <laughs> on the line, in, in, inside joke. But anyways, I'm gonna let Glenn introduce himself real quick. And along the way, we are gonna talk a little bit about some social media and when and where to use each social platform. Yep. And then I've got a few case studies related to some small businesses and what Glenn recommends for them to to do on social media. And along the way, if you have any questions related to marketing, social media, general real estate, feel free to comment and we'll do our thing. So cool. Glenn, tell us a little bit about Corner Unit Media. Yeah, so Corner Unit Media was built about a year and a half ago um, from myself and myself. Uh, I My background is in traditional media for about uh, 15 years in TV and mostly radio at some of the highest levels, national radio show, Fox Sports, Sirius XM, CBS, uh, Clear Channel. And um, quite frankly, a couple of years ago, I, I, I got married a little over two years ago. Or, yeah, a little over two years ago. And three or four years ago, when I started getting really serious with my now wife, Lauren, I, I realized that I, I'm in the studio a lot. Being in traditional TV and radio, whether at the national level, uh, before I met her, or at the local level at CBS, uh, when we started to get started to get serious and realized that, you know, there's more to life than working in radio and sports and grinding. I, I knew that I needed to get out of the studio somehow, some way. So um, I was lucky enough to help produce a friend of mine on inside the NFL for Showtime and was able to use a little bit of that TV money, as I say, to incubate this business. And I got out of the studio. I enjoy my life with my family, my wife and, and my friends and their children. And uh, I built this business in the process, taking what I know about audience consumption, disseminating a message, putting content out into the world. So a hot button thing, Jason, is everyone says content is king. Content is king. And it very much is. I created, whether from a producer standpoint or from a talent standpoint, content at a high level for 15 years. I understand how consumers, humans, audience, whatever they are, I know how they intake message and I know how to put it out to them. And so I took that from a radio TV world and I put it into a marketing world, right? It's still message, it's still content. So what I do is I create content and strategy for mid to small businesses. And then we execute on some of those, dis uh, on some of those ideas. Some clients, depending on what we offer them, take our ideas, put it to work themselves. Other clients don't have that ability. So we have the staff that implements the ideas and the strategy, whether it's on Facebook or a commercial. You can see behind me, that's a Justin Tucker uh, still from a commercial we did for a client. That's a car dealership locally in Baltimore, Carbiz. So we we do all kinds of stuff. What we like to say is, and we're, we're, we're changing our offering, to be honest with you, as we grow, we need to offer less. But what we say to them in the past is, any sort of content you create, any digital stuff that you do, we help you with that. Uh, we really focus on the digital space because it's the untapped new uh, world that we're in, but we certainly help in conventional space as well when it comes to marketing and media and strategy. So that's that's who and what and why. Sure. So we're going to talk a little bit about when and where to use each each social platform. Mm -hmm. You know, I still think there's a lot of people that take a content piece and they post it everywhere. But tell us a little bit about why you think social media is so important compared to traditional radio, TV, yep. or other elements. I mean, social platforms are darn near inexpensive, if not free, to get your your public message out, which is super powerful. But compare that to why you think it's so important compared to other traditional media. Outlets. Yeah. So, you know, traditional media is dying and there's just no doubt about it. We can show you data from newspapers to TV ratings, to radio ratings, to ad buys. Traditional media still has a tremendous market share. There's no doubt, but it is lessening. And so in saying that, Companies need to get their message out, whether it's advertising or theme or branding. They need to get it out into the world, to the audience, to the masses. Traditional TV and radio and newspapers, traditional media has always been really the only way. Phone book. Well, we don't have that problem anymore. 
every person, every company, every influencer, athlete, famous person, regular old Joe Schmo has their own megaphone. They pay for that megaphone through their email address and putting in some information, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. But we are so we're, we're totally fine and OK with disseminating that public message now. And there's no like, oh, well, I don't want to be all out there. And I, 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 I don't I don't want to have we are. We're okay with being on social now. We understand it's a real platform. It's a real megaphone. And so the reason it's important is, yeah, you can pay a ton of money to your local TV, local radio, newspaper, national to disseminate your message to the message, masses. And yes, it works. But you also have an opportunity to own your own megaphone, plow your own field, pave your own road, directly to your clients, potential clients. And we can own our own megaphone. The same thing that you sit down with your ad exec at your local TV radio station and they're like, yeah, it's 10,000 a month and you're going to get these amount of commercials. We can spend a quarter of that, have the same strategy discussion, have the same branding and messaging discussion, except you can put that out on your own company's social platforms, boost the post, paid advertising, for a quarter of the price and get same, if not better results in the digital space. I, I might be going down a road. You didn't ask me, but the answer is traditional media still has a large market share, but it's fading. We are ever more growing into a digital space. We have these social platforms that allow us to create and craft messages on our own directly to our potentials. And so why aren't we doing that? That, that that's, that's what I would say to that answer. We have to be and doing when that. You can hit and you can hit the entire audience that you could in the past, but you can target them significantly more. So there's no there's no point to hit 100,000 people when your target client's 10,000 people and you're only paying for that exact eyeball. And how 100%. And it's quantifiable. Yeah, I want to put a billboard up on 95 because I know a lot of people are going to see it. Okay. Maybe they are. It's good brand awareness. That's nice. But what action are they taking off that billboard? How are you quantifying that someone saw your billboard? Every time the phone rings, you ask, hey, did you see our ad on the billboard? Okay, that's one way. Tally mark, tally mark. 1985, that's how they did it. That's how they did it. We can target directly what traffic people are coming from so we know where we nab them, so we know to turn the volume up or down on those certain ads, those certain messages. There are digital billboards now that we run for clients. We can track it's quantifiable. Oh, well, I ran a radio ad and that, that rating, they, they get seven, they get, you know, their, their ratings are, they get a 7.3 share uh, from three to six. Okay. And their demo is mostly men 25 to 54. Okay. So you know about how many people are listening to a radio show at a certain time and you know their age. That's cool. But you can't really quantify who's listening when and what. And by the way, so people understand radio ratings. In the digital space, those are hard numbers. From radio, it's still a personal people meter. You have to understand these things to know why these things are being used and not used and why they work and don't work. You have a market like the size of Baltimore, let's say. There could be 20 meters on during afternoon drive time, and then they take that data and extrapolate it out to an entire market of a million people. I don't want 20 people extrapolated out. These are hard data that we get in the digital space. So we're making guesstimations and estimations when people do the ratings and how many people are watching or listening to a radio and TV show with the digital space. You have hard data to see exactly how many people clicked, who opened an email, where they went after they opened an email. Did they click this link to make an appointment for a doctor client that we had? Did they make click this link to fill out a loan application for a lending client that we have? Did they go into the car buying space for the dealership that we have? All those things are quantifiable, not, Oh, we're running a commercial on TV that might hit a thousand people when we need it, the right thousand people. So that, that's the difference. Yeah, all, all good stuff. If you're just chiming in right now, HMB Live, 11 a.m. every Tuesday, we have local social media and marketing expert, Glenn Eunice from Corner Unit Media. Uh, we just discussed the digital space and social media, why it's so, in, so important. I want to dive in a little bit into each social platform and let's dive into, let's just do the most popular ones. Sure. And, a lot of people don't realize, you know, they, they do a content post, maybe they do an image, a meme, whatever the case is, or a video, then they post it here, 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 and here. Let's just break through and go through each one of them real quickly and figure out when to use Facebook. When do I use Twitter? When do I look 
use LinkedIn and when do I use Instagram? Yep. So let's first start with Facebook, like you said, which is the most popular and important one. I think people have to realize it. And let's talk about, forget a business for a second. Let's talk about how people use Facebook and why. Okay. I believe that Facebook is used mostly for keeping up with family and friends, seeing what the world is doing of your friends and of your connections. Okay. My mom uses it. Mom, love you. Because, and, 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 and a lot of people, not just my mom, they don't even know it. They use it to gain the attention of the people that they're friends with, that follow them and that they follow. It's an attention getter. My wife, for example, lives on Facebook when she's not slammed at her job, but she doesn't do a lot of posting and a lot of engaging. She's a watcher. She likes to follow what's going on in the world. My mother is both. She wants the attention of people and she gives her attention to people. That's how Facebook is used in the world, right? I post something. I want to see who responds to it and I want to respond to their posts. You keep up with family and friends and what's going on in the world. Yes, there's noise. Yes, there's news. Yes, there's fake news. There's all that stuff going on. And people will say, well, I don't want to be a part of social media. I don't want to be a part of Facebook because it's too much nonsense. Well, there's good news in that. Facebook is what you make it. Twitter, Instagram, they're what you make it. Follow the people you want to follow. Follow the news you want to follow. And you can filter the news and the people that you don't want to follow. You can do that. Now, people might not want to spend the five minutes to understand how to use that piece of, I mean, my stepfather still doesn't know how to use the VCR. So I understand people don't want to use technology. We get it. But you can use it. So it's not an excuse when you say, oh, I don't want this because I don't want this in my feed. Well, you can figure out how to use it and filter that stuff out. That's the first part. The second part is from regular, you know, audience consumption piece. I see a lot of people lately, Jason, and it's very interesting to me using Facebook. Like if you don't read and respond to this post, then we're not true friends. Well, I've got news for you. It doesn't work that way. If you have 500 friends in Facebook and you post something, not all 500 friends are going to be able to see that there's an algorithm. There's a computer system that Facebook runs to keep all this stuff active and going and cycling in their environment. And that algorithm, that system, that program, the computer program that they run and, and, and people are going to say, well, they shouldn't do it like that. Well, that's their business, not yours. That's their platform. You choose to use it, but that system, that program that they run, that algorithm only shows that stuff that you post to call it 15 to 20% of your feed. It's probably more like 10 to 15, but let's be generous and say 20% of your audience is business, friend, whatever it is, is going to see that post. Facebook has turned into a pay for play model. And again, people might say, oh, well, they shouldn't do that. I ain't using Facebook no more because I want to post and I want all my friends to see it. Okay, we'll send them a text message. That's Facebook's algorithm and system. It's not about fighting the system. It's about understanding how it works and utilizing it to the best of your abilities from a personal family and friends standpoint or from a business standpoint. You can set up groups that all the people in a certain group, if you're using it for family and friends and family reunion notification, then you post on your timeline and you're wondering why Aunt Bertha didn't respond. She probably didn't get it in her feed. You can set up private groups for Aunt Bertha. That's fine. Or from a business standpoint, if you want Joe Schmo the regular consumer to see it, then you boost it to them. So it's a pay for play environment. I think from a regular day to day user, family, friend standpoint, people use Facebook to catch up, see what's going on, engage and, and, and get attention. It's an attention grabber. Hey, I'm over here. Look what I'm doing. Cool. Look what I'm doing. Cool. Let's engage in what we're doing from a business standpoint. Oh baby, it's a whole different ball game. It is pay for play. You can target, you can throw an absolute dart right at an individual or a group of individuals that fit hand in glove to your business. And that's why it is wildly powerful. Yeah, exactly. Like, like you said, like what we do on our business page and, and if you're in the real estate niche, Facebook's number one, I'm going to cool. give you that tip, tip right here. It's the, it's the most important thing. And think about this, what he just said about the business side and the individual side. If you're a real estate agent and you're branding under your personal name, the Jason Ballin team, or whatever the case is, right. keep it under your personal name. You have a lot more flexibility in, in that case. New features typically come out first on the personal page. And that being said, for us, in order to hit the, our target audience on the business page, yeah, we may pay for it, but who cares? It's just a mar it's, it's marketing. For five bucks, I could hit a ton of people and have a lot of flexibility to do whatever I want. So Facebook's so powerful. Let's jump into Twitter for a little and bit. And it's cheap. To yeah. your point, it and is cheap. super cheap. 
It's a heck of a lot cheaper than any other platform. And we do stuff on Google AdWords, all the digital stuff. It's the cheapest. And I mean, let's you know compare that to offline stuff, direct you know direct mail or going back to radio and TV. Yeah. So Twitter. What I use Twitter for and what we're seeing a load share of professionals use Twitter for. There's trolling. Yeah, we get it. That 140 fast character information, it's important. What I find Twitter to be super useful for is for my newspaper. I, I'm a twatcher. I, I, I used to be a heavy tweeter. I think I have seven, 8,000 Twitter followers. I, that could grow into a ton more if, if I was still on the air, whether national or local, and I was still feeding the beast and engaging. I, I don't do it anymore. Maybe that's shame on me, and maybe I'll turn the volume back up on Twitter personally. But what I use Twitter for is my newspaper. Jay, Twitter is my newspaper. I can read the Washington Post. I can read the New York Times. I can read the Wall Street Journal and Forbes and Tech and follow sports, not not just and, – and I don't follow a lot of celebrities and all that stuff, and a lot of people do, and that's cool. I follow the business of sports people. I follow a lot of reporters and beat reporters. I don't really follow him, but I'll use Adam Schefter as an example. All the, my former colleagues in the sports business, they put out pertinent, relevant, breaking news information. There's also incredible newspaper articles in there and just information. So for me – very important. Twitter is my newspaper. It's very simple. It's very important. And I love it. And what I tell my clients that we do business for that want to be involved in Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, which are like the three main ones. And LinkedIn's very powerful. Google Plus is powerful. And we, we'll, we'll talk about a bunch of those. But sometimes just being active on Twitter, pushing out information to people, Maybe it's the same as your Facebook post. Maybe it's the same as your Instagram post. But being active on Twitter allows the users to see, one, that you're there, and that's important. Half the battle is just, hey, I'm alive. I have a house here. I, I, I have a, I've staked my digital claim, and you can find us on all these platforms. One, because it helps with search, and that's a different topic which we'll get into, right? Because Google and Facebook are overing indexing on Google, so when you type it in, it helps people search for your company. That's one important thing of being on in, in Twitter. And the second piece is if you're actually putting out resources and news, it's a great way for people to see you as a credible, relevant resource that you're an active participant in it. So that's why I use Twitter. And that's why I think a lot of people still use Twitter. Now their user base is dipping. Uh, they're not growing, you know, past that 300 million or so mark, like, Insta and Snap and Facebook have just blown that by, but tw Twitter is very viable and it's it's super super strong for newspaper. That's what I, it's my newspaper. Yeah, no, all good stuff. I mean, it's it still has a lot of market share, and if everyone else is there and your target audience is there, there's real estate investors, sellers, buyers, uh, professionals on that space. So if you're not on Twitter, you and, should be. And they've tweaked it. So if you add a video or a picture. They don't count that into the 140 characters. They've opened that up. So whereas before, if you added a picture early on, it would take up, you know, 23 characters, 30 characters of that 140, then you're super limited. Uh, the handles no longer take up character space. So that 140 character limit of, you know, at hard money bankers, right? That doesn't gobble up 12, 13, whatever. I don't want to count how many it is. Um, it doesn't gobble that up. So pictures, video, all that stuff doesn't, dip into that 140 space. So they've, they've opened it up a little bit. And again, it's perfect for newspapers. It's perfect sure. as your personal newspaper. All good stuff. Let's jump into Instagram because Instagram obviously is a newer platform, but super powerful. <laughs> yeah. Crazy powerful Facebook bottom. Um, slime balls like Ian Horowitz and Ryan Tucker who are watching this, they probably are on Instagram looking at young, cute girls. Um, that's not how I happen to choose to use it because I'm an adult and I'm married and I love my wife and family. And so what I think Instagram, it's a joke. Everyone we can have fun here and talk business at the same time. What I choose to use Instagram for is how do I say this? It is uh, escapism, if you will, for some people. Now I use Instagram similar to the way I use Facebook because um, I don't personally for me, not for my businesses, but for me, um, I don't have the need and want like uh, a lot of people on Facebook to really sort of follow other people. Um, I do it on a surface level, but I'm not diving deep three level as we call like level three of Facebook is like your girlfriend that you went to college with 
sister's husband's cousin. Like I, that's, I'm not diving that deep. Like dudes, what I think Instagram is very powerful for from a personal standpoint is the escapism of seeing how other people are living. Instagram is a more curated sort of platform, meaning people take a minute to edit their pictures, edit their videos, show you how they're living. Instagram's a how I'm living platform, right? What are you doing day to day? How are you living? How are you grinding out in your business? What did your kids do today? Uh, did you did you take a beautiful picture of first day of school with your kids? Uh, maybe it's something silly. Maybe you're using Insta stories to show a message. So from a personal standpoint, Instagram is very much a how I'm living. It's It overlaps with Facebook, not just because they own it in the sense of you get to keep up with family and friends, but it's more of a social how I'm living as opposed to like an every single day to day, like update on what I had for breakfast. Now you may get that in the picture form on Instagram, but you're not getting the whole soliloquy of like, oh, well, you know, Aunt Joe. Aunt Joni's doing great at the hospital today. Thank you for all your prayers and wishes. She stubbed her toe and had her boil removed, but she's doing well. That's Facebook. Instagram is more like, yo, check out this sick dress I'm about to go to this gala on, or my kid threw up in the back seat. Look at the mess it made. That's Instagram. Um, and it's obviously picture based. It's picture based. Yeah, people make comments, but we're seeing a lot less trolling on Instagram than we did on Twitter. For some reason, people respect the art. And a little bit of the boundaries of Instagram. From a business standpoint, oh man, Instagram is tied right into Facebook. You can run ads on Insta and Facebook right in your same ads manager platform via Facebook. It is super targeted. It is beautiful. People actually engage. You get engagement. You get attention on Facebook. It is very, 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 very powerful uh, when you're talking about advertising, especially to a younger demo 25 to 40, uh, 18 to 35, Facebook dominates your, uh, Instagram dominates the face on that. Instagram is so powerful. And especially if you have your business that lends itself to beautiful pictures like restaurants, bars, car dealerships, real estate agents, beautiful pictures, beautiful kitchen pictures, beautiful bathrooms. Instagram is wonderful for that. Yeah, well, what I was going to say is, you know, think about it. Pictures tell a thousand words. There's no, yeah. you, you you put a picture, you put a video, and it describes exactly what your company does, exactly what you're currently mm -hmm. doing. It's very, very, very powerful. Instead of going and, like, you know, Glenn said about Aunt Bertha or stubbing her toe, whatever the case is, you don't need to tell a story. You put oh, that. Oh, yeah, Joni. Okay, whatever. <laughs> what, you have a lot of ants. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> no, but, but you know, a before, a before and after picture, whatever the case is, you put a before and after picture of a layout of a house, someone knows what that is. You don't have to put details on it. So it's super powerful, especially when you're on the road as a business owner. You can jump on, you can post real quick. I mean, I wasn't 100% anti Instagram until recently. It was more of just a new platform. I was busy with other things, but it's so intuitive and so easy to use. And now Facebook and Instagram overlap. And I'll tell you, real estate investors, real estate agents, any other real estate professionals out there, people are on Instagram because I see the analytics on it. And whenever we post stuff on there, we get a lot of feedback. And if you ever heard any of us speak before, every eyeball counts. If you're a new yep. business and you get one eyeball, congratulations. If you're an existing business and you have a lot of eyeballs, even better. Every eyeball counts. And there are people on Instagram, just like me, just like you. And we're all you know, all business owners, we're all looking to make money. We're all in, interested in real estate. So make sure you're on Instagram. Yep. Um, cool. Let's dive into LinkedIn. And then I want to talk about one or two case studies and we'll do our thing. Any questions? Like I said earlier, any questions? We do this live at 11 a.m. every Tuesday. If you have any questions for Glenn directly, make sure you're commenting under this Facebook thread right now in this feed and the questions will pop up on our screen and then I'll read them off to Glenn to answer them. So we're going to dive yep. into LinkedIn, LinkedIn real quick. Yeah, and you can uh, feel free to hit us up at our website, cornerunitmedia.com. Contact us, contact us that way, and we'll be happy to answer any questions or help you out if you need anything. Um, we're currently in a growth phase here, so we're excited about that. So uh, last couple months of, of this year and the beginning of next year, you guys are going to see a lot of uh, – growth and change from corner unit media, which we're very excited about. And quite frankly, I'll just put it here because it makes it real when it's out there to the public. We are going to be the digital marketing strategy, you know, social focused digital agency of record in the Baltimore, Washington area in the next year or two. So uh, we're excited about that growth. No question about it. Uh, I, we're going over. So I'll be quick with the LinkedIn and, and the next ones you have. But LinkedIn is extremely powerful B2B and, and really 
person to person. It, it's a business platform. This is not a social platform so much as a business platform. Um, we are actually trying to get ramped up into understanding LinkedIn's business side even more. I don't mean Glenn's LinkedIn page to Jason's LinkedIn page. That everyone knows how to do. And people are using that on a one-to-one -one basis really well in the marketplace. LinkedIn personal for business is crazy powerful and it builds your network up in a major way. Although I, I will tell you, I had a train uh, ride from New York to DC uh, last year or earlier this year with a prominent uh, executive in the NFL world. And he was saying to me how he's sort of fading on LinkedIn because he gets requests from all kinds of people that he doesn't even know. And he just gives them a cursory yes, because he doesn't want to feel bad. That's happening when what, what they told you when LinkedIn first started. And I think it's very important for its, uh, for its power is, Add people that you want to know and that you know, not just spam the globe because it loses a little bit of its power. Then it turns into quantity versus quality. But choose your own adventure on that. The business to personal on LinkedIn is something that we're getting very bullish on here in the last quarter of the year at Corner Unit Media in the beginning of next year because you can run ads. You can run paid ads on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a very powerful tool. What I urge people to do is use their personal LinkedIn page to hit other people to let them know. So if I'm a head of a real estate agency and I'm trying to recruit new real estate agents, I'm going to use my personal LinkedIn page to put a corporate post on there so that other people can see, oh, this is what they're doing. I'm going to syndicate that on the company's page as well. But the best action we see is person to person from a business standpoint on LinkedIn. Yeah. I mean, think about LinkedIn, more business to business, not business to consumer. Yep. So us as a hard money lender, it works out, works great because there's other real estate developers and investors on there. If you're a real estate investor, you're probably not going to find a seller on there. You may. That being said, you may find buyers, you may find lenders, you may find other service professionals, you may find employees. There's a lot of different ways to utilize it. I will tell you that some of our kind of our higher end clients, they find us on LinkedIn because we publish content there and they're not trolling through Facebook. They're not trolling through that. They're, they're a little bit older. They want to read good content that they see on the internet and LinkedIn's yep. big for them. They're, they're business owners themselves and they see our content on LinkedIn more than any other social platform. So real estate agents, sim similar to that, but it's definitely more business to business than business no to doubt. consumer if you're in that space. Um, let's dive into just one case study real quick. I want to ask your opinion on something. Sure. Um, I was hoping to do a few more of these, but we're, we're flying over. And if you have any questions, feel free to, to comment in. Let's say I am a real estate investor and, you know, I have a busted website, a small social profile. What would you recommend? What social platform should I set up? Should I set up all of them? Should I set up none of them? And what type of content should I post on these social platforms as the bare minimum? Just to get yeah. started. So I would say set up Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and, and throw LinkedIn in there. Um, and I think that's the basic. I think that's baseline. Some people would say that's too much. And so it depends on the person's tolerance and understanding of content and what they want to put out. If it is too much, I would say, all right, start with Facebook. Just do Facebook. If that's palatable for you, if you can digest starting a Facebook page, start a Facebook page and get your website up to date because your busted ass website, yeah. it, it, it that's your, a, 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 a website is your, um, is your white pages ad, is your yellow pages ad. That's your front door. People are going to search that. People are going to type in bustedrealestateinvestor.com and when your website comes up, it better be nice. And if, it, if it's not, then you lose credibility right there. So what I would do is very simple. There's baseline stuff that you can do. Introduce yourself. On, this is on Facebook. If you don't, whether it's video, a picture, written word. Okay, here, here it is. Posting anything is good. Posting a picture is better. Posting video is the best. So written word, fine. Picture better. Video the best. Explain who and what you are. Hi, I'm Joe Schmo. I'm a real estate investor. I have a crappy website. I'm working on it. Post that. I'm Joe Schmo. I'm from Pennsylvania. I live, I drive a Ford F-350. I'm a huge redneck, but I love it. Great. Post that. I and Just start engaging your audience. Who you are, what you do, who's your staff, what they do, where you're from. 
and that's your start, right? That's your basic start. If you're a real estate investor, you're trying to buy property. You have a story about when you bought a property or didn't, it went well or it didn't. Tell that story. Hey, I did my first deal in 2015 and I got hooked. All right, well, tell us about it. Write a blog about it. Write a blurb about it. Take a picture of it. Drive by the property, even though it's been sold two years ago, and take a picture and say, wow, I can't believe that the Johnsons are living here now. I don't give away any personal information. It's so hard to believe that that was my first deal three years ago. Great content. What's the proper? I just acquired this property. Send a picture to it. Man, we have to dig out this basement. We didn't think that this row home in Baltimore needed a, needed a new basement, but it did. 80000 down the drain. Oh, well, we'll get it back on resale. Take a picture of it. Post it. Things like that. People like, oh, God, I don't want to be out there like that. I don't, I'm not creative. I don't know what to do. Dude, who's your secretary in your office? Take a picture of her. Post it. This is our secretary. She dominates everyone's face every day. She's the reason we exist. Post it. You're good. Things like that. Anything. Anything. Real estate, real estate's sexy. So if you're real in the real estate. estate space, you should never have a problem with posting stuff. Take a picture of a property. You never bought a property? Go take a picture of your property or, or another house. It doesn't matter what you're. It doesn't matter. Post it. Be yourself. I'm gonna do a quick recap of that. Of that, real quick. First off, if you ever heard the term digital assets, everything is important. When if I promise you that if you're selling a property to somebody, you're buying a property from some, whatever the case is, they're Googling you and they're trying to search for you. You want them to find your website, your Twitter, your Facebook. If they type in busted house buyers dot, you know, busted house buyers, all of those social platforms, all of your websites, all of your bios, they got to come up. All of a sudden, all signs lead back to you as a hard money lender. I want someone to search for hard money lenders and, and, you know, we come, you know, I come up here and then I come from a contributor here and my Facebook page comes here and then my paid ad comes here. And all of a sudden, no one could go buy from anyone else because I'm taking over the entire block. We're That's everywhere, right. everywhere, everywhere. So those digital assets are so important because everybody's searching for them. But like Glenn said, at the very least, you got to have those things up because you need the credibility. Even if it's, it's, even if it's a very, very, very low key website and it's your digital billboard with your contact information, what's the worst thing in the world? When you, when someone comes to mind, be like, Oh, I need to reach out to so-and-so and see if they can help me with this. And then you can't even find their information. They're not business. No one's looking for business cards in their drawers anymore. They're going to go online and they're going to look for your website or they're going to look for your, your social profile. They're going to look for you that way. So you better, better, better have your contact information readily available for them to contact you. Because if you don't, boom, they're moving to the next person. Yep. Is that no doubt point? about it. It's great. Cool. Advice. Glenn, certainly appreciate it. Uh, always a pleasure. I'm glad we could learn a little bit more about Corner Unit. And Thank you. And social media, I know there's a lot of other topics that you can talk related to marketing, but I felt like social media was super important because it's it's just so darn powerful right now. It's and so powerful. Pe people are underutilizing it. And I can tell you firsthand, we do deals on the internet and on social every day, lending, buying, everything. I'll tell you one quick story before we go. And I hope I get to see you in person soon. Joking <laughs> aside, we're separate. Our office is separated by a wall here. So uh, I'll be seeing you when we, when we yep. Knock, knocking on the wall there. Um, <laughs> we have a real, as you know, uh, HMB is a client, full disclosure. And we have another large real estate agency that's a client in the Baltimore, Washington area. And they'll do about 400 houses a year. And we help them with some of their strategy and their execution on social. The first two months we started helping them, the owner, the owner's wife, the operations manager, one of the lead salespeople all responded is, wow, a lot of people are coming to us and saying they're seeing us everywhere. That's great. They love the Facebook page that we, that Facebook page had been created for two years. They just hadn't done anything with it the right way. The engagement, the reaction, the marketplace awareness for a medium to small business on social media, you might not be able to quantify everything, although we gave a whole speech on how you can quantify it. It is limitless and it is so powerful when your neighbor says, oh, I saw your Facebook ad or, oh, I saw that post on Facebook. Let me tell you, that plants a seed. They do business with you down the road, period. Anyway, period. that's it. Thank you for the time. period. And, and then 10x that or 100x that, which is very, it doesn't matter if you're a one-man operation, you have a gigantic company. One-man operation is actually, a smaller real estate firm is actually easier to freaking kill, you know, killed in, killed in this space. So uh, I hope you guys found this helpful. Glenn. Thank you. And how can everyone reach out to you? Uh, cornerunitmedia.com is the best way. Um, and someone will get back to you for sure. There's a capture page on there. Shoot us your email. Uh, info at cornerunitmedia.com as well. Cool. Thanks, guys. Until next time, 11 a.m. next Tuesday. See you then.